Okay, so now we're going to get into the video. Uh, I'm not going to waste too much time watching the entirety of it. Because, uh, again, I am mashing this video up with another video. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just going to uh, cut a little bit to some of the important parts because I feel like she kind of wastes a lot of time. Just, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, we're going to start right here. So, anyways, um, she says that, um, all right. She says that Cat Noir, uh, Adrian here, is a really perverted character and whatnot, and that pretty much, um, people call him out for it because, oh, well, he's a white character, and white characters don't get, uh, criticism, but minority characters like, uh, Marinette, who's half Asian, and, um, uh, her best friend, Alia, who is, uh, well, I believe she's kind of black and French, and her boyfriend, Nino, who is Adrian's best friend, is also black. Uh, they get called out um, and whatnot, or they get a lot more criticism compared to Adrian based off their skin color alone. So now she's going to say that he's perverted and misogynistic, that being her straw man to why Adrian doesn't get criticism uh, or why, like, or at least her criticism towards him and that he just doesn't get called out for it because, oh, well, he's a white character, which I just think that's ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, and I know an ad's going to play it. I'll skip that in a second. But uh, here's what she has to say. He is the biggest perv. He is the perviest pervert ever. And it is so annoying. To watch. So annoying to watch sometimes, okay? Did I just hear you purr? Uh, no. You're up. Not a chance, kitty. Like, he was always hitting on his partner. I swear, this always gets something playing in the background. If you hear a. Uh... Um, honk noise, uh, apparently that's a train passing by, um, around my area, so, sorry if you hear that or not, I'm not sure if you can, and also I have, I'm, a, I'm, I'm apologizing for the lag and stuff, in case you, there's like some kind of lag or something, or some distortion of the audio, uh, I have no control over that, uh, as far as my limited abilities goes, with it comes to editing and whatnot, or recording, but, uh, just bear with me, I hope this all turns out smoothly. Crime. Ladybug, who is basically just Marinette in disguise, we all know that. Y'all, y'all gotta accept the fact that Ladybug and Cat Noir are the same people as Adrian and Marinette. A lot of y'all just don't want to come to terms with that, but y'all need to anyway. Let's continue, okay? So he's always hitting on his partner in crime, Ladybug, and he's constantly making passes at her, trying to kiss her, trying to touch her. Do whatever. He's trying to do all of this for her simply because he's in love with her. And no, that, that, that's not how you go about it when you like somebody, y'all. I'm sorry, not sorry, but when you're in love with somebody, you don't do these things to them. You genuinely don't. And it, sometimes it feels like... I mean, not to say that, like, this is anything new, but I mean... When you think about other stuff, like other series, like, I don't know, Batman and stuff. I mean, Batman has a relationship with uh, Catwoman and stuff where that started because, oh, Catwoman's a thief and she likes to tease Batman and stuff or whatever. She likes to um, she likes to thrill the chase and whatnot, uh, that kind of thing. And she would always flirt with him or whatever. Um, but again, it's not like, oh, yeah, well, but when a man does it, when, oh, Cat Noir uh, flirts with... Um, uh, ladybug and stuff. Oh, it's a it's a it's misogyny. It's so sexist. It's perverted even um, Yeah, and it's not even just Batman, but there's other characters too like spider-man and his relationship with uh, black cat You know Felicia Hardy or uh, daredevil and his relationship with Elektra and stuff. Um, yeah, I Mean this isn't anything that's new and honestly, I feel like um, Adrian and ladybugs is um, relationship together as like partners and stuff is like how do I put this? I feel like the relationship is like very, uh, what's the word I want to use here? Not flirtatious, but it's like it's a little bit more lighthearted compared to those other three relationships that I kind of mentioned and whatnot. Because most of those relationships are like very sexual and whatnot. Um, whereas this relationship is just more so okay, well they're partners for now, and they're steadily, you know, you know, possibly like lovers and stuff. But uh, let's continue. 
as if Adrian keeps doing these things to Lady Gug because he thinks that it will get her to like him. Like, I see men do this often. I've seen it in real life. I've seen it in numerous shows and things like that. Family Matters. Where they continue to bother the woman that they have interest in. Basically wearing her down until she finally gives in and says yes and begins to date him and fall for him, okay? That's I know I keep pausing it a lot, and that's what I'm going to do. If you want to watch her full video, uh, well, there's the uh, name of it right here. Um, anyways, uh, she did a video a little while back about family matters and stuff and why she doesn't like the relationship of Steve Urkel and Laura Winslow. Now, I'm not going to react to that or anything because I'm only reacting to some of the videos that I just have a problem with. And again, that's just her opinion on that matter, and that's fine. But, I mean, person myself, I think Laura... And Steve were actually a kind of a cute couple by the end of the series and stuff. Um, if you don't know who Steve Urkel is, I don't, well, I'm not going to tell you the entire thing, but mostly we already know the whole story with Steve and Laura that they grew up as kids and that Laura would always reject, in case you watch Family Matters, of course. But Laura had, um, you know, she was friends with Steve, but she would always reject him and whatnot because Steve was kind of always uh, just, I don't know, he was a little too weird and stuff, and not to mention he was very nerdy around the other like uh kids and stuff so of course you know like laura was always concerned about her image and didn't want to like you know seeing dating uh, you know dating steve who was kind of a bit of a nerd but she was still kind of cool with him though and then you know later on laura like after like they graduated from school and stuff and they were like at least in college uh laura started to really fall for steve when he moved in with them and whatnot and um yeah but basically she's just gonna say that oh well pretty much steve just wore down laura and whatnot, and all that, and it's just, you know, it's not even a genuine, like, relationship at all. Uh, but yeah. It's literally what it feels as if Cat Noir is trying to do to Ladybug, and it is very disturbing to see, okay? So, oh, guys will continue to bother a woman until she gives in, and that is why I think Adrian is equally just as bad as Marinette, in my opinion. Both Marinette and Adrian ain't shit to me, okay? Both of them ain't shit to me. Marinette and Adrian remind me a lot of Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers from... And to give you a good picture in case you don't watch Miraculous. So basically, uh, what Adrian does is Cat Noir, because he's in love with his partner Ladybug, uh, again, completely unaware that she's Marinette, is that uh, Adrian, he usually tries to flirt with her and stuff. He makes jokes. Um, and by the way, those two clips that she played about uh, Adrian, like, okay, first, like, they come from the same episode. It's season two, episode three. So basically, uh, that first clip that she played where uh, Marinette falls on Adrian, and stuff, um, and he starts purring like a cat and stuff, and she's like, are you purring? Now, you can probably see that, take it for what you will. It could be a sexual innuendo, could not, but I actually Google real quick, and I don't know too much about cats, so uh, just bear with me. But the reason why uh, cats purr is as a form of self-soothing or even healing. So, like, cats will often purr when they're feeling stressed or they're injured or something uh, as a way of, like, just a form of communication, right? So, not anything like too, like, sexual or anything, right? Or it doesn't have to be sexual, I guess. But, again, I thought it was a pretty good joke. But, uh, again, um, because the situation that they were in was that they, um, that Hawk Moth, uh, you know, he's the main antagonist, he's the villain. He, um, turned an uh, innocent reporter or journalist into a, uh, villain and stuff and basically trapped him on this train. And... Yeah, pretty much was gonna force them to like reveal their identities or their like make them give up their miraculous or pretend like they were a couple because um that's what she was trying to investigate. So Adrian was trying to convince her that there were a couple, uh it's just to buy them some time, but that's why uh Marinette kinda of rejected the idea because yeah, and then Adrian just gave up halfway there. Uh but anyways, yeah, so that's what happened there. So she took those two scenes completely out of context for one. And, uh, yeah. The Scott Pilgrim saga. Like, both of them have done some horrible stuff. Both of them are both horrible. And Scott Pilgrim is a great series. I definitely recommend you uh, check it out. Uh, definitely the movie. I remember, like, I saw the movie for the first time. The movie was awesome. Uh, I need more of the book, so I've only read volume one, so I can't really say. But personally, myself, I think Scott and Ramona are okay. Uh, I just think the worst thing, the worst things they've done is probably just cheat uh, in other relationships and stuff. But other than that, so 
now anyways, I'm going to skip a little ahead and stuff because, again, I want to kind of condense this video a little bit. So, she starts to compare Adrian. Oh, yeah, and then I forgot to mention about Marinette and her relationship with Adrian. And what's the problem there? So, basically, Marinette, uh, I already mentioned how as Cat Noir, Adrian likes to flirt with her and whatnot as a uh, ladybug. But for Marinette, Marinette kind of simps over Adrian uh, and whatnot. It's kind of very obsessive over him. And went out to the point where she has like pictures all over her room of the guy. Uh, I remember in one episode she actually like went as far as to buy like 50 like birthday gifts and stuff for Adrian. Uh, just to give one uh, to him every year for like, you know, every 50 years or something like that. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So Marinette can be a little bit obsessed with this stuff like she's broken into his house, misused her powers and stuff. And I think uh, there's a definite, like, I think some YouTubers definitely um, give some pretty good commentary other than Haryana on Miraculous, or better commentary on uh, Miraculous than Haryana. And I feel like those two YouTubers would be Shady Durags and um, Cyrus the Great. I really think Cyrus the Great does actually have some, like, good points and stuff. Like, uh, I don't agree with him 100%, but at least, like, a good 88%. But when I think of his points, I'm like, wow. I can't disagree with that. <laughs> I'm like, I just can't refute that. He's really got a point. Um, just, you know, stuff that he likes in Miraculous and stuff he doesn't like, and mostly now that, nowadays it's stuff that he really doesn't like because they've been kind of fumbling the bowl, especially with Adrian's character. Because honestly, I think Adrian's like one of the best um, characters on the show and whatnot because he has like the connection to the bad guy and stuff, and the whole uh, story and the plot kind of centers around his family, which is kind of cool. Because, you know, basically, like I said earlier, Hawk Moth is his dad, and Hawk Moth's goal is to revive uh, Adrian's mom, who's currently in a coma and stuff, by stealing the Miraculous. But, uh, yeah, so that's the whole point of that. But Adrian isn't aware that his dad is Hawk Moth, though, that he's been going around uh, taking advantage of people like that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that would make for definitely an interesting story, uh, an interesting story when he finds out. But it just feels like they're giving Adrian less to do, and they're giving more... Uh, things to do for uh, Marinette, like turning her into some kind of grandmaster or whatever, or etc. You know, even though like Adrian is like pretty much smarter than Marinette statistically, and is also like more of a skilled fighter and stuff. He's a very skilled fencer, uh, everything. So I don't know. It's just like Marinette just gets put over Adrian and went out by the writing and stuff. But back on topic. So in this um, part of the video, she starts to compare Adrian to. Um, R. Kelly, of all people, to Robert Kelly and stuff. Um, she claims that he's a pervert and a misogynist. I argue against that. But she starts to claim that um, Adrian is either just as bad as R. Kelly or he doesn't get called out uh, and whatnot. But, R but someone like R. Kelly does. So, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's take R. Kelly, for example, okay? We have been talking about this nasty PP man on our channel numerous times, okay? But here we're going to bring him up because I think this right here will just... Anyway, you'll see what I'm doing. You'll see what I'm doing. R. Kelly has had a horrible childhood. For those of you guys who don't know, he was during his childhood. And that resulted into him being a horrible adult, okay? R. Kelly is wrong. R. Kelly is wrong as hell, okay? And I brought up R. Kelly because, as we know, R. Kelly is a black man. He is a black man, a visibly black man. When you see him, you see a black man, okay? And I don't see many people defending R. Kelly for what he did because of his horrible childhood, okay? Like, yes, it does give us reasoning and understanding why he did the thing he did, but it's still wrong at the end of the day, and he shouldn't have done it at all, okay? When it comes to accountability, and this also is just rooted in racism, too, white men are the last of the bunch to get it, okay? White women are more likely to be held accountable, not that often, though, but more accountable than white men are for their act. That's a joke, right? Okay, everyone is so quick to jump on every single last person in this show that is a person of color or a woman in this series. But when it comes to Adrian and Grace, no, everyone is just so hesitant on doing All right, so let me tell you a little bit about R. Kelly real quick. So if you already don't know who R. Kelly, well, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who R. Kelly is at this point. But um, we already know, uh, but some of the crimes and stuff that R. Kelly do has done really outweighs the whole okay this is this transcends the part uh, beyond the part that oh he's just another black man and whatnot in the industry or whatever stuff people are just trying to bring him down no r kelly's done some pretty fuck shit 
and whatnot. I mean, okay, you can make the claim that, okay, Adrian's a misogynist or, per or he's a pervert. I doubt he, I really have my doubts about that. I don't think he is uh, a misogynist or a pervert. I'm pretty sure he's not um, and whatnot, especially with the evidence that she provided. That doesn't prove her point. She just took some scenes out of context like, he's a pervert and whatnot. I just, yeah. Like, yeah, it's not like he's saying, or he's done anything, like, as wicked as, like, R. Kelly, because R. Kelly's done stuff, like, uh, first time I heard about R. Kelly was from the Boondocks and stuff, because I'm not really all into music and stuff like that. Well, I'm into music, but I'm not, I don't listen to his music or whatever. Um, I might have heard some, some of this stuff, like, uh, I guess, Chocolate Factory, or I Believe I Can Fly and stuff back in the old days, but R. Kelly, though, uh, I first heard about him from the Boondocks and stuff. Uh, I heard he peed on that, uh, one girl and stuff who was, like, 14, uh, and stuff. Uh, which is basically statutory rape, and he had, like, when I, well, he had sex with her, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's still statutory rape, and then later on, um, I was looking more into R. Kelly, so I can kind of better understand, like, what are some of the fucks, like, what, what are the more fucked up things he's done, and I'm like, wow, so the other thing he's done is that he's actually married, he once married a minority, and when I, he married a girl who was, like, 15, but she faked it on her, um, on her um, license or something that she or her birth certificate that she was 18 or something but she was in actuality 15 and whatnot so I don't know maybe you could probably make the argument that R. Kelly probably didn't know but then again the man had sex with a 14 year old which is still pretty fucked up so I'm pretty sure he knew that she was 15 I don't know how you can just get away like how a 15 year old unless she was really that well developed I don't know how a 15 year old can get away with being 18 and stuff, and yeah, I definitely don't uh, encourage you to get married when you're 18. I mean, you can, I mean, you can consent around that age, you're an adult from that point on, but still, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, and then, uh, then the biggest thing I had to say R. Kelly's done is that he had a whole sex cult and stuff. Um, yeah, this man had like a whole harem of women, but not even just like that anime type of harem, he had a whole sex cult, bro. Like, basically, he would control. Uh, the basic needs and rights of all these women and stuff like that was living with him like stuff like they can't go to the bathroom without his permission They couldn't eat without his permission stuff like that. I'm like bro. That is like slavery right there And he was also like manipulating them had them pretty much brainwashed I'm like yo that is like mental sexual abuse, etc. So yeah, that's pretty fucked up now when you compare that to Adrian and stuff yeah, um I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to see past the whole, okay, it's not just because R. Kelly's black, it's because he's done some pretty egregious things and stuff. Adrian, not so much. Um, like I said, I mean, I would say probably the most selfish thing I think Adrian's ever done was when he almost destroyed Christmas because um, his dad was being like, you know, kind of an asshole one time and he was kind of fed up with it. And Adrian wanted to run away with uh, Ladybug and stuff, so he basically asked her to, uh, run away and just leave their lives behind and whatnot so they can live together because he's in love with her. Uh, other than that, I don't really, I don't think he's ever done anything that's too crazy or whatever, unless he's being manipulated or mind controlled or something, and that's different. But, uh, yeah. So let's continue. Uh, and whatnot, and it's not even a race thing. She just, she's just trying to make it a race thing, in my honest opinion. Doing that because everyone was so quick to jump on Nino in that Rocketeer episode, that episode that pissed me off so bad. Everyone was so quick to jump on him when he was being. She's referring to this one of those recent episodes, season four. I'm not exactly caught up with season four yet, I'm, but I at least know what the episode she's talking about because I've seen it. Uh, but basically, she's talking about this episode where Adrian's best friend was kind of jealous of him as Cat Noir because he thought he was putting the moves on his girlfriend when he wasn't, but it was pretty dumb. And Nino was very unlikable in that episode, and I wouldn't even blame his girlfriend, Alia, if she broke up with him, but she didn't, uh, sadly enough. And I was like, damn. <laughs> but anyways, let's... Being an asshole. He was just his girlfriend, and he tried to call Cat Noir. Everyone was so quick to call out Alia for what she did in that episode, too. And somebody tried to say something about it being Mary's fault. She was the person that was at least fought for that situation, where Adrian, in that episode, did something extremely wrong, and nobody wanted to call him out on it. Now... Well, I only saw the episode like a couple weeks ago, so I can't complete rem uh, completely remember. But from what I remember, he tried to set things straight uh, with uh, Alia and stuff because there was a rumor going around that they were seeing um, that they were seeing each other or something, or they had the hots for each other. So they both tried to confront each other about it, and they're like, "Okay, we're just cool, but we're not like you know, not like that, basically." So I don't see how that's his fault. 
And when you did, people always want to bring up that same excuse talking about Adrian and Cat Noir are not the same person. Yes, they are. Get over it. Like I said, anytime. And she's talking about how, like, the shipping community and Miraculous is kind of weird because in the shipping community, they kind of, like, ship Marinette and Adrian and stuff in four different times with their separate identities. So, like, let's say they'll ship, like, Ladybug and Cat Noir together, but then they'll ship, like, Ladybug and Adrian together. And then Adrian Marinette or um, or Marinette and uh, Cat Noir, which is kind of weird. But I remember seeing a YouTuber and stuff. Uh, I don't think it was Cyrus the Grey or it was Shady Durex. It might have been somebody else. But um, they were talking about how um, I might link him or whatever if I could find him. But uh, he was talking about how he thought it was interesting for like at least with uh, Marinette and Cat Noir being together. Because usually when it's like Ladybug and Adrian together, they're like, oh, they're, yeah, because they clearly have a crush on one another and they're just clearly shy and whatnot and then when it's like Marinette and Adrian Marinette kind of acts like a complete klutz and then when it's Ladybug and Cat Noir Cat Noir acts like a complete simp for Marinette or a well, complete simp for Ladybug but for like Marinette and like Cat Noir it's like okay uh, they have this whole mutual kind of friendship and stuff which is kind of nice to see on screen and whatnot where they're not like completely fawning over each other and they actually have some pretty genuine moments and stuff. So that's why people like to ship that um, ship mostly uh, than the other one. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. But uh, that's what she's referring to. Hi, anyone else that is either a person of color or a woman, people are so quick to call them out, okay? Every time Marinette is being creepy, people call her out, as they should. Every time Alia is egging her on to be creepy, people are calling her out, as they should, okay? Yes, both of them are wrong for what they do. When Lila lies, she's wrong. When Cole is being a bully, she's wrong, okay? All of them are wrong, but they all get called out on their stuff, okay? But when Adrian is being Cat Noir, he's being extremely misogynistic, and everybody is so hesitant to call him out on No, he isn't why he is doing what he's doing because at the end of the day it's very disgusting it's very disturbing ladybug is physically uncomfortable and people think that it's just funny she's not um like i said she doesn't it's not like she has anything against cat noir when she's ladybug but as ladybug she rejects his advances and stuff because she's already in love with um with what's his face with him as adrian but she isn't aware that he's adrian which kind of complicates things but it's kind of like, imagine like Spider-Man and Black Cat's relationship, right? You know how like Black Cat always tries to like, um, you know, event, like tries to um, make some advances towards Spider-Man or something, at some, like in some situations and stuff. And then Spider-Man is always rejecting Cat and is like, no, my heart belongs to Mary Jane and stuff. It's kind of like that, basically. With uh, Marinette and uh, Adrian, at least as Ladybug and Cat Noir. But she's not uncomfortable or visib visibly uncomfortable or whatever, or disgusted by it. No. She just doesn't want to hurt his feelings or break his heart or whatever. That's usually the case. Every time we try to call out Cat Noir, Adrian, for being misogynistic, people always want to go, Oh, that's not really him. Shut up. Shut up. But pretty much uh, what I'm going to get to, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I feel like um, this is unnecessary, but pretty much, it, just to make it clear in case you can't uh, read into it, basically she's just making a whole rant against white people and stuff, and how white people don't get caught out a lot, and I argue against this, because there are definitely cases where a lot of white people have been, like, I don't know, either thrown in the bus, they're not given benefit of doubt, uh, because, oh, they're white, or, uh, or I don't know, or they're definitely called out, like, for example, last year, there was a whole case with Derek Chauvin and those other white officers that had, um, had, um, you know, murdered, uh, George Floyd, whatnot, who was a black man and whatnot, uh, again, he was, no, he was no saint either, but still, he didn't, you know, he didn't deserve, uh, what happened, that was police brutality on that, on his part, and, again, those officers, they all went to jail, and got uh, publicly, publicly humiliated and whatnot. So there was that. Uh, but there are people out there who do some stupid shit like, I don't know, Don Lynn, for example. Uh, Don Lemon has done stuff like he's tried to defend, like, because there was this one time where a bunch of, like, black teenagers had like, kidnapped a uh, white kid and they tortured him and stuff. And 
then Don, like, and after, like, the kids got arrested and stuff, Don Lemon tried to defend the black kids and stuff. Like, oh, well, it's because it's a race thing and because they feel like they're inferior. No, they're grown adults. They fucked up. They kidnapped a guy and they tortured him. And they deserve what they're, huh, what they're getting, so it is what it is. And then, oh, uh, what else? And then there was Jesse Smollett, a uh, gay black actor and stuff, who was on, like, Empire and stuff. I never really watched Empire. Um, but anyways, uh, Jesse Smollett, he faked his own hate crime, and now he's definitely being called on it. Huh, he called out on it again. Uh, and, uh, yeah, these days they're bringing that back up. Uh, but yeah, like a little while ago, he, uh, faked his hate crime and stuff, and I was attacked by Trump supporters and stuff, when in actuality, yeah, he, uh, pretty much hired the dark-skinned guys to, like, fake a hate crime and stuff, and whatever, and just, yeah, and then he wasted so much, like, manpower and whatnot, so, my point being is that, um, well, one, black people are no saints either, white people are no saints, but I'm just saying, though, um, white people, what she's saying, though, about how white people get caught out a lot, I would argue against that. I mean, hell, like, people w will call out Donald Trump or they'll, like, Donald Trump will get a whole lot of press or something or whatever compared to, like, I don't know, Barack Obama or something. But it is what it is. So let's continue. what he does because of him being a white boy okay like AJ literally is like the whitest white boy in this show he's like that blonde hair blue eyed white boy okay like people are constantly just making up this because it's part of the but when it's a person of color even just a white woman does something wrong everyone is just so quick to jump on them and that is fame right it's kind of a family misogyny right there it's just racism and misogyny that's not even a family problem though okay and I feel like because of me being a black woman that's why it was so easy for me to call out Adrian on his mess I didn't have to say it at all I straight up said it like it was okay So, pretty much, um, just to recap, in case you, I mean, because I probably sped this up fast enough where you probably couldn't even hear or process it, well, or unless you just watched her video, uh, her actual video, um, pretty much she just rants about white people and stuff, and how uh, they just aren't shit, and how basically she has this old prejudice against white people and stuff, and that she's willing to call out uh, white straight men in particular, which again, that's the prejudice right there. Um, then she's also like, oh, well, at my job. And I don't know how well the story holds up, but she was, like, at her job one time. It was a white guy who had chance after chance, but then he was uh, let go at some point. And she was saying that um, basically a minority, like, if it was a minority, like a Hispanic guy, or if it was a black guy or something, or whatever, or something, then they would have got snatched up. Or they would have, you know, they would have been fired on the spot. They would have never been given a chance, even though that doesn't really, again, that doesn't hold up. That's like, okay, uh, she doesn't give any examples of, yeah. So, to me, that's just dumb. Uh, and especially, I actually kind of have a, little, have a little bit of a small story time real quick. Because I actually remember, um, I used to work with this guy. Uh, he was a black dude and stuff. I'm not going to say his name or anything, of course. But he was a black dude and stuff. Um, he used to clock in his hours at work a lot. Um, which, I, I mean, I never said anything about it. And, I mean, everybody, all the staff kind of knew. Hell, even the general managers, they kind of knew. Uh, the first one being, she was a white lady and stuff. She didn't really care or say anything. But... The higher-ups, of course, would care because when you clock in hours that you're not working and stuff, because he'll clock out, like, he'll clock in, then he'll wait till the next day to clock out and stuff, which is kind of crazy because, you know, he, that means he just gets more money and stuff that way. 
when he's not working those hours. So, yeah, that's what happened. So basically, he um, I was surprised he stayed around because of that uh, for like for a while, even though he was doing that. But and so like later on when he was uh, seeing our other general, like seeing another general manager and stuff, and then they both got fired because of that. So eventually they ended up catching up with him. But my point being is. I mean, it can almost happen to anybody. So it's not like, oh, it's just white people, white people, white people. And I feel like she's very obsessed with race and stuff. She always has to be like, oh, well, I'm identified by my gender and my race and stuff. Like, oh my God. There's so much more to people than just their race and their gender and stuff. Like, there really is. But anyways, that's the end of this video right here. Uh, I'm going to match up my other video with this one. So uh, this has been round one, and I am out. All right, I hope you guys are ready for part two. So this is the video uh, that I'm going to be reacting to next. Uh, hopefully this won't be too long. I'm going to try and, um, you know, make it as short as possible so I can kind of mash up these two videos together. So, yeah, let's get into it. This video right here. I have been trying to make this for like over a month at this point and literally every single time I have tried to finish the outline, it never gets done. But guess what? I finished it tonight. It may be 2 a.m. but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> There's something about it that bothered me so much and it reminded me why I don't like anime fans either. Anime can be very gross. It can be very gross and when I say gross, I mean pervy. It can be freaking nasty. Like I'm I don't want <laughs> She doesn't like anime fans. Well, she's really not gonna like me because uh at least not after this. So I'm like, yeah. Um because trust me, you know how much I love anime and stuff. Or if you don't, uh you're about to see in this video and what uh how I'm gonna shut this whole video down. So it's just mostly gonna be a breakdown of this whole video and whatnot of like her my hero academia rant and whatever. And again she can have her opinions and stuff, I don't care about that. But I just felt like um, this video just comes off as very, very uh, ignorant and very disrespectful to like a lot of the people who put in work on these uh, series and stuff like Fairy Tale and My Hero Academia. But uh, yeah, so that would be fun. Or to see a big titty underage girl run up to the screen. No, keep that back there. I like, it really get on my nerves if somebody could just be sitting there with big boobs and y'all would make a nasty ass comment directed to their titties. Like, people have big titties. It happens. It's natural. Leave people alone. You know what's also natural? Sex. Lust. Um, I mean, come on. Alright, uh, I'm not gonna really bother because it's mostly just her just talking a lot. So, I'm going to skip. There you go. I kind of wrote down some of these timestamps so I can just know when to just skip over or just let this whole thing play. Let's see, right about here. There we go. Perfect. And I'm sorry for the lag, guys. Talk about that. We y'all came because y'all want to hear me talk about my hero academia, okay? I Okay, I have recently gotten into My Hero Academia, and I have some words, okay? I enjoy it, but there is just so much shit. And if you saw my video that I did on One Piece, um, you would see my top 10 for favorite anime, and you would see My Hero on uh, on there. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, My Hero Academia is definitely one of my favorite animes, too. Uh, but, yeah. But, again, I'm going to address all of her points and stuff. She has a lot of points to make, and I feel like she gets a lot of stuff wrong, which, again the whole purpose of me breaking down and just reacting to this video. ...about it that just bothers me, and I'm just gonna sit here and um, debunk. Harry debunks My Hero Academia, okay? I just want you guys to know to just take everything I say for a grain, with a grain of salt, 
all of this is just my personal opinions, all my personal preferences, and just why I just don't care to get back into anime for this particular reason, okay? And by the way, like I said, y'all, I'm tired. So if you guys see me reading directly from my phone and the reason I'm standing up is so I won't fall asleep, I just want to stay focused. So, as I said, today we are going to be talking about My Hero Academia. Now, this is amongst like a favorite of my followers. You guys have been telling me for so long that you think I would like My Hero Academia, and I was like, mm, why? Why would I like that? And I actually did give it a chance this past fall, and I really did enjoy it. It's my cup of tea, I'm not gonna lie. I truly do like it. I remember somebody had told me. Because I remember I was talking about how much I love Sky High. They were like, you would like Micro Academia. It's literally the same thing. And it is. And I really do like that. I like Sky High a tad bit more. But we're going to get into that. Why? And also, all of my friends like My Hero Academia too. So, yeah, we're here. So, I took a look at it. I'm currently reading the manga because... I'm not going to lie. I do like Sky High. It takes me... I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I actually do like Sky High. It was a good movie back in the day. Uh, I mean, it was corny as hell, but it was fun. And it's definitely memorable. But, uh, yeah. It's so long to read, to watch an anime, but I can go through a manga like that. I can read a manga in two hours, and I'll be done. And then I'll move on to the next book, okay? That's how I read all the Fruits Basket when I was 11 years old. I had time, cuz. But like I said, I really like My Hero Academia. I think it's really cute. And I was surprised that I liked it because I'm not really the biggest fan of shonen anime. I'm more of a shoujo and josie anime. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but shoujo is the top. So if you don't know what shoujo beat is, um, basically... Uh, it's a type of genre where it's focused on like romance and stuff. Um, so let's say something like Rosemary Vampires, and I would say the manga, not the anime. That's more so like, um, you know, centered around romance and stuff. Or, uh, yeah, versus the whole Aichi factor. But other than that, yeah, just, you know, rom like, you know romance, uh, like romance and stuff. Um, or I guess romantic comedies, whatever. Um, yeah, that type of thing. Where shonen anime is more so like centered around like power fantasies and stuff like Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I want to say I think Rurouni Kenshin Shonen, Full Metal Alchemist, Naruto, One Piece, uh, Bleach, uh, My Hero Academia, obviously, uh, um, Black Clover. Uh, I think Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, um, yeah, those are more so like shonen animes. So just wanted to point that out uh, in case you didn't know the difference. Target audience is teenage girls, while Josie is um young adult women. Like Agresco, love that show so much. I don't know if I ever want to get on here and talk about it because that show pissed me off. But anyway, there's just something about My Hero Academia that just really bothers me. And the thing about it that bothers me so much is the thing that just made me fall out with anime all together and why I just never really cared to come back to it. There's something about it that bothered me so much and it reminded me why I don't like anime fans either. Anime can be very gross. It can be very gross and when I say gross I mean pervy. It can be yeah, how can nice, be gross to me? I don't want to see a big titty underage girl run up to the screen. No, keep that back there. I don't want to see a little teenage boy flaunting his abs and walking around sweaty. Like, I don't want to see that. Like, yeah, that's fine and all, but again, for like, let's say the, um, well, I'll get to the whole big titty anime girl in a second, but the, oh yeah, I don't want to see an anime boy sweating his abs and stuff, yeah, with his sweaty abs and stuff. I'm like, it's usually shown in anime, so if you're watching something like, I don't know, um, what's a really strong character, like Goku or something, um, nine times out of ten, you know, Goku's probably going to be shirtless and stuff, uh, because he just fought a, like, a hard-fought battle against, like, I don't know, Vegeta, or like Frieza or something, he's all like, you know, like, you know, they're fighting and stuff, and yeah. Um, because, you know, Goku won, he works out, and he trains, of course, so it's not like he's going to be like, you know, he's not going to be a toothpick, or he's not going to be scrawny. Uh, yeah, this dude is like muscular, of course, soul as hell. Um, and again, and they're fighting like a long-fought battle, so, you know, just showing you how intense it's going to be. So, you know, they have stuff like that inside My Hair Academia, where, um, you know, like, let's say, like, Deku, he'd be, like, shirtless when he's fighting, like, somebody, like, muscular or something like that. Or whatever. I mean, it just happens. Like, so what? It's anatomy and whatnot. And she was like, oh, I, 
it's it's just gross. It's gross. But yet she you know, wants to do all of it. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to say all that. Ew. Even when I was a teenager, I didn't see that. That just made me uncomfortable. See how mature. It's gross, and other things about My Hero Academia that make me uncomfortable. Other things that made me not care to go back to anime. And one major thing that I strongly dislike in anime is one how. It's really from the perspective of the male gaze, and it truly does show badly. Ooh, there it is, the male gaze. I swear, that must be her favorite word. And it is from the perspective of the male gaze, too, they over-sexualize women all the freaking time. That's why I didn't like fairy tale. And three, specifically branching off on over-sexualization of women, they over-sexualize teenage girls a lot. And sometimes they're not even teenagers, because I remember when I used to... Alright, let me stop right there. Um, so mostly, yeah, they do have a lot of fan service stuff inside anime. I mean, it depends on what you're watching, because if you're watching, like, I don't know, Full Metal Alchemist or Inuyasha... Um, what's another show that doesn't exactly like what I would say is sexualized, um, or etc. Attack on Titan and stuff. I wouldn't say they like sexualize women or anything, but you know, if you're watching like something like Fire Force or I guess well, like she just said, Fairy Tale or something, yeah, I mean, they have some little fan servicey things, but again, that's not what's carrying the story though. I mean, there's also stuff like the story, the characters and stuff, uh, the backgrounds, everything, um, stuff like that inside anime is what makes it interesting. But that's just the icing on the cake, I guess. But anyways, um, for like, you know, fairy tale. I mean, Lucy, if you want to say, oh, well, teenage girls and stuff. Well, yeah, well, Lucy is like, well, f first off, in the beginning of the series, Lucy's like 17. And then by the end of the series, she, she should at least be like 24 or 25 because, well, physically, she should probably be like 18. Because um, remember, like, um, and if you haven't watched fairy tale, there was a time where um, they were trapped on this island. And stuff and they like this they just didn't age and stuff so uh seven years kind of went by when they finally like awoke from their um uh, from their stasis and whatnot um so yeah so technically speaking lucy's like 25 but she should have the like you know but she should be like 18 physically though uh but anywho uh, so stuff like that so she's going to talk about some of the characters like yayu rosa for example um and whatnot and just talking about how they're over sexualized and stuff and usually Whenever it's those type of girls, it's usually like they're at least somewhere like, let's say, 16 and up. Now, and again, it's just fiction. It's not like it's actual, like, oh, real life uh, guys just lusting over women and stuff. And not to mention, anime is supposed to appeal to teenagers, of course, you know, uh, to a male, like, to a younger male audience and stuff. And I'll get into that in a second, too. But that's the whole purpose of, like, you know, anime is. Yeah, like, at least with shounen animes, it's supposed to appeal to teenagers and whatnot. That's usually sometimes why the characters are so young and whatnot. I mean, duh. But anyways, um, it is what it is. Um, to be really and it has, again, it has nothing to do with misogyny. Uh, male gaze, whatever, I guess. But you can just use whatever word you want. But, again... It actually sells. Alright, so moving on. Uh, I'm going to just skip a little bit ahead. Because uh, it's mostly just her talking about some anime that I don't know about. Um, right here. is a big nasty okay and the creator of my hero academia there are just some creative choices that i really don't agree with uh, one of the examples i was saying where she was shit talking some of the creators like hero uh mashima and um kohei uh hikakoshi uh hirakoshi and stuff but she'll talk about that later in the video but right now she's going to talk about yayu rosa and why not um uh, He's very weird, in my opinion. Very, very weird, like, in a bad way, okay? The way he speaks about the teenage girls in his shows and um, the way he draws them sometimes is, um, mm, mm, that, that's all I gotta say. Like I said, I don't agree with all his creative decisions. 
It bothers me the most specifically when it comes to Momo. And there's one particular scene with Mina that really bothered me, but I'm gonna bring that up when I get to um Manita's nasty ass. You know it's funny that she keeps talking about Mineta and whatnot, and she keeps mispronouncing his name, it's Mineta. Or like how uh for Neverworld likes to pronounce it. He be saying, Oh, how's for Neverworld says he says his name? Be like Minata. Yeah, I love I love how for Neverworld pronounces it, but it's not no Mina uh Minata. No, it's Mineta. Look at me being a But here it's just Momo. Stay away from Momo. Y'all are gross, okay? No, you are not Momo's age. Stay away from her. Y'all are freaking disgusting, okay? Momo is 15. She is a child. Like, I hate her hero outfit so bad. Like, I didn't realize that Momo was a kid, like, when I was watching, when I was reading the book. I thought she was one of the adults until I saw she had the uniform on the next scene. And I was like, wait a minute. She's one of them? And she was wearing that. Like, I thought she was one of the teachers, like, not lady. Like, I was just confused. I was just so lost. I was lost for words, and I was like, she's 15. She shouldn't be dressed like that. Also, can we just stop over-sexualizing big boobs in general? Like, please. Like, just because someone has been... Alright, so just to point this out, um, she got a few things wrong. First off, Yaya Rosa is not 15 anymore. She was 15 in the beginning of the series, but at this point... Yayu Rosa should at least be like 16 and a half, um, if you actually like think about the My Hero Academia timeline. I don't have a timeline per se like that, but uh, as far as I'm aware, like right now, like they just like, um, originally they had like Christmas like not too long ago before I think the whole stuff with Shigaraki and the whole society thing just went down in flames. So yeah, um, Yayu Rosa should be like close to 17 now at this point, so she's not 15 uh, and whatnot. So I mean, I don't know where she's at in the manga. I want to say she might have to be like somewhere at least in like at least in season two she has to be in but for me I'm all I'm already caught up because I didn't want to hear any spoilers for uh, my hair academia so like I've read all like just about the uh I'm all caught up on the manga and stuff um all the chapters online and stuff that kind of thing so uh so yeah pr so whatever she has to say I can probably have an answer for uh but yeah that's the whole thing about Yayi Rosen and then the second thing I also wanted to address is Yayi Rosen's hero attire now I mean I know I know it's really revealing and stuff um, you know, it's sex appeal, whatever. Uh, she may not like it. Um, a lot of guys, uh, like it. I don't have any problem against it. Uh, I guess if it was someone that, like, that was close to me, like my, um, cousin or something, or my sister, I'd be like, well, my, well, my sister, she's a grown adult. She can do whatever she wants. But if it was my cousin or something, I'd be like, mm, no. Nah. But the thing about Yaya Rosa, why she wears her hero attire like that, like why she wears her hero outfit and why it's so revealing is because that's how her powers work. And whatnot. And that's how uh, Hirokoshi kind of develops his, um, like you know, his costume, like his hero costumes and stuff, so he can accommodate the powers and stuff that the uh, characters uses. Like Bakugo being the biggest example, like being one of the biggest examples, or Mirio, who I'll also talk about in a second. But for Yayu Rosa, though, so basically the reason why it's so revealing is because her powers work, like because of how her powers work. So basically, you know, she has the ability to create inanimate objects from her uh, body and stuff, so she can create like. Uh, sticks or bombs or cannons and stuff mostly from her body of course uh, and it depends on like the lipids and depends on her knowledge of what she uh, of the material that she knows of what she's making and stuff like that that kind of thing which I'm like that's actually kind of that could like if Yagi Rosa like let's say knew the secrets of the universe or some crazy something I don't know don't, like that'd be overpowered as hell but I think it's a cool bet like I think that's a pretty cool power but, yeah, but it makes sense, though, why her outfit's revealing, you know? Um, same thing for, like, Hagakure, because Hagakure, you know, invisible girl. Hagakure, um, <laughs> apparently, that's the one part that actually kind of does concern me a little bit, because she's invisible and whatnot, but she doesn't have, like, any clothes on besides uh, gloves and shoes. And I'm like, bro, just imagine if, like, Mr. Aizawa just turned off her powers or something one day, and then she's just all naked. I'd be like, oh, shit, <laughs> that's a little weird. Uh, and it still is weird, but, um, it really is, but, anyways, but back on topic with Yayu Rosa, so yeah, Yayu Rosa, that's why, because pretty much why her outfit's so revealing is because she has to, um, you know, create objects and stuff from her body, and she can't really do that, or she'll have a difficult time doing that if she's, like, fully clothed from head to toe, like, wouldn't she not have problems with doing that? So, uh, that's why, okay? So, like I said, she already got two things wrong there. 
big boobs. They do not deserve to be cat called. Y'all are freaking nasty over here cat calling people with big boobs when they walk down the street and y'all hooty hoot at them. They don't want that. Stop over sexualizing big boobs. They're just a piece of somebody's body. They're just the body part. Yeah, it's not like anybody isn't attractive to just a body part or whatever. I mean, like, oh my god, it's, there's nothing wrong with feeling attracted to or it's, um, I don't know, breast or ass or whatever and stuff. I'm like, it happens, okay? Like, it really get on my nerves when somebody could just be sitting there with big boobs and y'all would make a nasty ass comment directly to their titties. Like, People have big titties. It happens. It's natural. Leave people alone. Well, she's making my job easier. Alright, skip to 11. 15, that's where she's going to start talking about Mineta. But, yeah. But that's pretty much what I had to say about Yayu Rosa. She completely got those um, things wrong. Those things are all wrong right there. Now we're moving on to this. Like, super cute and stuff. Okay, now we're gonna get into Minita. The most unsettling thing I. Thing I found about My Hero Academia really has to be Minita's entire existence. And uh, always gotta be dissing my boy, Minetta. Now, Minetta, I'll talk about why I like Minetta in a second, but l let's hear her reasons because basically she's just gonna act all shallow and be like, oh, Minetta's ugly. Oh, I hate his quirk. Oh, uh, I just I just don't like his character. He's just annoying. Like, stuff like that. That's some very generic stuff that I always hear, like, commonly amongst people who always, like, be talking shit about Mineta. And I got a response for that. And he should not be here, in my opinion. But the most unsettling thing about Minita is that I just don't like him at all. I think he's very ugly. I think he's very... Um, um, irritating. I think his quirk is very stupid. I don't. She had to think of some things. Like it. I just don't like him. I just don't like his existence. He annoys me. I don't care about him. He is a menace to society. Manita is a menace to society. Okay. I Her videos on race and misogyny, and this on anime is a menace to society. But Mineta, though, I mean, not that I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm straight, but. I mean, Mineta's kind of cute, though. I mean, no homo, but, I mean, Mineta's kind of cute. I mean, he, when I look at Mineta's character design, I just think, man, Mineta looks like a character from Fairly Odd Parents or something. He kind of looks like like a t like Timmy Turner a little bit. At least with his, like, mouth, you know, with his, like, well, not his mouth, but at least with his, like, you know, his button nose and the way how his, like, upper lip kind of curves and stuff. Reminds me a lot of, like, Fairly Odd Parents in a way. But I actually like uh, Mineta's character design. I like his, uh, definitely I love his hero attire. I like his uh, costume and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. But that's just my opinion, though. Um, but yeah. But in terms of like, and then also his quirk as well. A lot of people also be like, oh, his quirk is so useless. Not really. I think, okay. When I first saw his quirk, I was thinking to myself, because, you know, I watched stuff like One Piece and JoJo. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. This quirk may not be broken or overpowered as hell like it may not be like as flashy as like bakugo or todoroki or something but i don't know maybe it might actually have his uses like it can be like very resourceful and it actually is um that's the whole purpose of his quirk it's supposed to be resourceful so stuff like it's useful for like climbing walls it's useful for like binding enemies capturing people and stuff um because you know his balls can stick to something for a day mineta was literally able to uh pass the entrance exams because he was able to bind some robots together and whatnot and get points that way uh compared to just destroying them and not to mention i remember he was actually able to move like really quickly because he can actually bounce off of his own balls and move at like super speeds and stuff which is actually pretty cool so that's just some like just a little, like some things that mean could actually do with his quirk and whatnot so it's supposed to be like okay uh i've been dealt a hand and i gotta figure out how exactly can i use that to my advantage that type of deal with his powers and stuff and i think that's very creative don't like him and in the book let, this is the nastiest thing about it okay in the book the creator himself even said that Manita is him and that Manita basically is his self insert in this story a grown man self insert in this story basically being perverted towards teenage girls 
Now, um, I personally don't have an issue when creators do this, where they like put a self insert of them in their stories. Like it can be done very, very well, or very, very popular and very, very terrible. Okay, a really great example of when it was done very, very horribly to the point where it was laughable, where a ton of ass cheeks inserted himself in the miraculous ladybug. That would never not be funny. That he was the joke of the day when he did that shit. Okay. I don't know about that, but no, I mean, that is not a self-insert like she's trying to imply. Um, no, actually, I think that um, the creator probably mentioned that he can see a bit of himself inside the character, uh, Mineta, and when I knew, he probably took, he probably, like, wrote down qualities that he had and applied them to his character, and whatnot, and that's, like, common amongst, like, any writer. Like, I mean, you can ask, like, I mean, I ask, but, like, think about, like, the creator of Sailor Moon, right? Uh, Nayako uh, Takahashi, uh, I cannot pronounce her name right. I'm just gonna stick with calling her the creator of Sailor Moon. The creator of Sailor Moon, basically, um, she um, used to intern at a shrine and stuff. Um, she used to be a shrine maiden back in her youth and stuff when she was like younger and stuff. She used to do that back in high school, and basically she did stuff like uh, you know that kind of thing. And then when she made her character uh, Sailor Mars, you know Ray Hino, basically she had um, what did she do? She basically made Ray a shrine maiden and stuff, not like an intern or anything. Like she actually was a legit shrine maiden. Or, let's take Sailor Moon, for example, Usagi. Um, the creator of Sailor Moon, she ended up, um, she had a hairstyle and whatnot back in her youth, uh, which is similar to kind of how Usagi's hairstyle is. Uh, and whatnot, the more, uh, the, yeah, one of the most popular anime hairstyles and stuff, where her, you know, her little spaghetti meatball head look, her, uh, bun head look, yeah. Basically, uh, yeah, Nayako had that same hairstyle too back in her day. Uh, and then she applied it to the characters, but that doesn't make either Sailor Moon or Sailor Mars self-inserts and stuff. And for, uh, yeah, and I don't think Mineta is supposed to be a self-insert of, uh, Hara Koshi. But this, this right here is just really weird, I'd say. It's just very, very weird because if Manita is your self-insert, I'm sorry, baby, but you could have kept that shit to yourself, okay? You didn't have to tell nobody that. That honestly makes you look worse admitting that your self-insert is the per gross pervy character. Like, do you do you not see the flaw in your action stuff? I could say the same about her whole entire channel, <laughs> but that's what I'm here to talk about. Like, I mean that as disrespectfully as possible. We did not need to know that information. You really could have kept that shit to yourself. Manita is supposed to be one of the comic relief characters, but in my opinion, he's not. He's not funny, like, at all. I don't get a laugh at him, and I honestly just... I don't know, I think Mineta has some pretty good jokes. One of the funny, like, one of the, like, the funny jokes I was thinking about was when they were thinking about, like, doing a, um... Like, before they were thinking about throwing a concert and stuff, uh, and whatnot when they were trying to, like, you know, uh, welcome Ari to, uh, UA and stuff, and, uh, they're all pitching ideas and stuff, and Kaminari is like, yeah, and I'll talk about Kaminari in a second, too. But, like, Kaminari is like, we should have a, um, a cafe and stuff, and all the girls can dress up and become maids. And then, uh, Mineta is like, no, even better, I'll do you one better, Kaminari. How about we have a strip club, and then Sue ties them up and stuff, and is like, mm, yeah, we're not gonna say that on the manga. But, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, I was like, oh my god. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, I know Mina is super perverted and stuff, and he could probably say some wild shit, but, um, again, I mean, I've, but again, I'm kind of used to this at this point, like, I've seen plenty of perverted anime characters all in the past, like, I don't know, like, Sanji, uh, Moroku from Inuyasha, uh, Master Roshi, Master Jiraiya, um, hell, Issei from High School DxD, I think Issei, honestly, like, I don't care what you guys say about Mineta, Issei is, if not, the biggest pervert in all of anime. Like, literally, his abilities um, revolve about his pervertedness to some extent. Like, he can, like, he relies on a strategy by stripping girls naked and stuff in order to, like, I don't know, defeat them that way or something. Or he has to touch um, his girlfriend, you know, Reyes Grimmery. He has to touch Reyes' breasts just to get stronger, which is kind of weird, but yeah. And this guy is, like, literally on the verge of dying, and all you can think about is, oh, he just saw titties. Like, yeah, Issei is a bigger pervert than Mineta. I don't care what anyone got to say. And then there's also Miliotis, which Miliotis is just kind of weird. But at least he's, I guess, a pervert to his uh, girl, you know, to uh, Elizabeth. So, I mean, at least the man's loyal. But 
I mean, it's just a stereotype. It's a stereotype, okay? Like, of course, you have your stereotype pervert kind of character, especially if they're going to be like the old uh, Zen master like Kensei Ma or Jiraiya or Roshi and stuff. I mean, it, it's common. So at this point, I don't really care. Um, and whatnot, Mineta, I'm like, I think he's a decent character and whatnot. I don't care about his pervertedness. Just grown tired of just perving humor in general. I don't find hitting on people perving nasty ass humor to be funny. That's why so much shit up in Dan Snyder shows I don't find to be hilarious anymore. Perv humor is just not funny. Like the difference between Dan Snyder and Kohei Hiroshi is that Kohei Hiroshi isn't sexualizing like actual people and applying his fetishes to them or to children for that matter. So me. Leave people alone. If you feel the need to make somebody feel uncomfortable to be funny, you're not doing something right. Like, Manita has never made me laugh. Like, not at all. Like, I was dead when Froggy, I cannot pronounce her name for nothing. I'm so sorry, but when Froggy... I'm not gonna lie, I used to have a little trouble trying to remember Sue's name for a second. Cause, I mean, well, not her name, because, like, I used to call her Azui, which I thought, yeah, I mean, that's a cute name. It's very simple. But she's like, no, just call me Sue or Sue you or whatever. Just, yeah. And I'm like, well, and then, you know, it kind of stuck, so yeah, but her full name is Azui Suyu. Uh, she keeps saying Froggy, it's actually Froppy, that's her hero name, uh, which is also an easy name to remember, but uh, yeah. Or best girl. started, like, you know, drowning him because he touched her inappropriately. That was funny. When literally it's the scene where Mina has started like breakdancing, he was like, oh my gosh, she don't have shorts on, why is she wearing shorts under her skirt? And then the um, invisible girl started beating him like because of that. That was funny, okay? Like the only time I get chuckled out of him is when the girls put him in his place for being freaking gross. Like that, that's it. The girls are funny. Way funnier than when it's ever been. Also, I just- So it's okay for like, oh, well, so okay, the double standards. So basically, she's a, like she's all like, oh, I just hate Mineta how he's always perverted and stuff, and I always hate how like um they're uh, sexualizing uh young underage girls and stuff as if like you know because she's trying to say like oh well it's not fiction it's like you know like as if oh but when it comes to like oh I don't know Sue which is like who tried to drown him and whatnot which it, I'm not gonna lie that scene was pretty funny, but still um. Being a pervert's wrong, but drowning someone, oh yeah, that's hilarious, guys. Or, oh yeah, hitting hitting somebody, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I mean, again, I find it funny too, but I'm just saying, um, she's trying to hold um, Mineta to a certain standard, like as if you can't hold someone else accountable for that standard as well. You know what I mean? just don't care too much for his character arc either. I find him a very unlikable character. I just don't like him. I just find him very irritating. And I hated guys like him when I was in middle school. I hated guys like him when I was in high school. I really strongly despise guys like this in college. Like, grow up. You shouldn't have been acting like that when you were younger, but you're still doing this shit now. It's giving insult. Just extremely. Hmm. And I wonder why she couldn't get a date. <laughs> Let me stop. I'm not sure I act all catty. But unlikable and a lot of people can share this opinion about why we don't like Manita. like y'all there are Manita apologists on the internet and i'm like no we have very valid reasons for not liking that gross ass dude like y'all what reasons i mean because i mean honestly i don't even think Mina's really done anything i mean yeah he has a lot of things on his mind he's always constantly thinking about uh being a pervert and whatnot but i feel like Mineta definitely has his moments and stuff um yeah i mean be like oh he's like always dreaming like you know fawning over some girls or he's like yeah he'll like i don't know people on some girls or whatever or just i don't know or i remember that one time where he actually tricked the girls into wearing cheerleader outfits and stuff i mean stuff like that i mean okay so what <laughs> i'm like okay uh that's not as bad as like again the stuff i just said earlier with isei and when i know she's talking about anime in general but I'm just saying, Mineta, he's not the worst, uh, he's not the worst anime pervert out there and whatnot. There are plenty of weird anime perverts out there, especially that are older than Mineta, who still kind of like, yeah, who could be like, I don't know, hundred something years old and they would still be doing bullshit like this. But, uh, yeah. Um, but anyways, what I think, what I like about Mineta is that Mineta, I kind of see him more so as an underdog or, let's have her talk about him. 
Moving on from Minita, the last thing about... So, what I want to talk about My Hero Academia real quick, or not My Hero, I mean about Mineta, is that what I like about Mineta's character. I mean, I think Mineta is a cool underdog type of character. Uh, I think what Hirokoshi was trying to go for is that, you know, what he was applying to Mineta is that he's awkward and she's like and he's small and he's not exactly good with girls and stuff. You know, that was one of my, uh, one of Mineta's, um, I keep saying My Hero. He, that was one of Mineta, well, he is My Hero. But one of uh, Mineta's, like, you know, motivations to becoming a hero was that he wanted to uh, become a lot more popular with girls and stuff. And he thought maybe he can uh, do that by becoming a hero. Which I'm like, yeah, that actually makes sense for his character. But eventually over time, like, Mineta started looking, well, Mineta already looks up to All Might, or he's always looked up to All Might in the beginning. But over time, you know, he started to look up to characters like um, Mount Lady and Deku and stuff. Uh, he was one of the first people to actually notice uh, Mount Lady's, like, change when All Might had, um stepped down as like uh, you know the number one pro hero and even like recently in well one of the recent comp like recent mangas and stuff i'm not going to spoil the whole thing i'm just going to talk about this one in particular scene where basically uh mineta um was going up uh, he was like uh, trying to bring home deku and stuff and he was telling deku how much he admired him and that was like that whole controversy about him being bisexual which is bullshit because we know mineta ain't bi come on people um you gotta be crazy if you think that and if you know who mineta is but anyways, Mineta was telling Deku how much he, like, admired him, not because of his quirk or his powers, but, you know, just, like, you know, what he stood for, you know, like, you know, he was really strong and brave, and Mineta wanted to be just like that. So, that's what, that, those are some of the things that I like Mineta for, and whatnot, and he tries to, like, become a fuse, like, he's really loyal and down for the cause, he's heroic and whatnot, noble, that's Mineta as a character, and whatnot. I mean, yeah, sure, he's perverted and stuff and whatnot that's just stuff on the side and he's yeah but he's low-key actually one of the smartest kids in class and stuff right so uh that's Mineta so um yeah so basically uh moving on to our final subject and mostly this is just going to be her just talking about feminism and whatnot and it's kind of just annoying Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I kind of had, um, I kind of got held up with something, but, uh, anyways, I'm back now, and I'm ready to finish the rest of this video. So I already spoke my, um, piece about Mineta and why I like him. Now, basically, in this next subject, is gonna talk about how, um, My Hero Academia would be so much more better if it was girl-centric, or if it was all about girl power, or female, whatever, embodiment, and I believe that's BS, or I believe, yeah, that would flop. And stuff, especially how, like, you know, especially since stuff like that nowadays is getting applied to the Western stuff. And that's really turning away their actual audience and stuff because nobody wants to read that stuff. Like, Star Wars or X-Men, they're trying to change it from X-Men to X-Women or X-Girls or whatever. It's kind of dumb. Uh, and when I'm pretty much insulting, actually, to uh, the works of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and all the other writers who did a good job or the artists and stuff who really did an excellent job at building those characters and stuff only for some rando normie to just show up and just tear that down entirely so uh yeah but uh here's what she's gonna say probably gonna speed it up because it's really long uh and i don't want to like you know spend too much time on this whole video where i don't want this video to be super super long okay so let's get into it thing about my hero academia that just really kind of bothers me is um how much of the story focuses on boys and what i mean by that i'm gonna get in detail about that okay it just doesn't for the show to have that many female characters it doesn't quite focus on them all that much it, it, it does not it does not and let me explain I, I am a heterosexual woman and maybe because it's the feminist in me everyone always know i am a big feminist person i've always been drawn towards girl power and girl empowerment and women empowerment type stories i am always drawn towards telling stories of girlhood and womanhood literally all of my stories are about girlhood and womanhood even if the focus like of my fan fictions is about a boy the story will focus more on his female love interest okay I'm just big on telling female stories, specifically black female stories. Maybe it's because of my history with men. I just kind of, even though I am straight, uh, I just really have really bad experience with men. Just really terrible history with men. No, I don't hate men. Like, people try to say that I do. I don't. I don't. I just really don't care for too much of them, especially when it comes to my storytelling. I mainly like to focus more. Hmm. Terrible with men, huh? I wonder why. On just girlhood and womanhood. Because, like I said, it's just, 
It's just personal stuff. That's just me. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because none of this has anything to do with um, what's his face, My Hero Academia. I'm telling the truth. I was very disappointed. I couldn't help but feel disappointed when it came to the girls and the women. Like the story was giving a lot for the boys and the men. It's a great story, okay? That's why I'm still invested, okay? But when it came to like the girls and the women, they're just kind of sidelined and they're just kind of forgotten about in a sense. And that really kind of bothers me a little bit. Like, I see a lot of people actually complaining about this on Twitter, so I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that is bothered about how all the women in the show are just kind of pushed off. Yeah, on Twitter, people. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a very credible site where a lot of, yeah. You know, one time I actually got into, an, like, into a debate on Twitter uh, because uh, I was talking about how I saw this movie Luca, and then there were some people who were saying that Luca's uncle uh, from that recent Disney movie or Pixar movie or whatever, was saying that Luca's uncle was transgender or something because he was a certain type of fish or whatever. It was really stupid. And then um, they were saying Otis from Back at the Barnyard is also transgender or something. I'm like, <sighs> you can only find like, people like this on Twitter or Tumblr or just, I don't know, somewhere on the internet. There's always got to be people like this lurking in the shadows or in these spaces. Off to the side. Like, they're either there for, like, their male characters, like, amusement, or they just kind of don't know what to do with them all that much. Especially, like, when it comes to Yoraka. That is something about her that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, we see how she and Deku have their growing friendship, and then she had her battle with Bakugo, but then kind of after, like, that, it just kind of simmered down, and she's just kind of there as, like, Deku's friend at the moment. By the way, y'all, I'm still in the middle of reading it. I'm still in the middle of reading it, so... I ain't caught up to date on everything. This is just kind of like my quick thoughts about. Yeah, I had a feeling because either she's hasn't gotten that far into the series yet, or she's just reading what she's reading off of Wikipedia or something. Oh, my hero academia, so just keep that in mind. I do enjoy all the female characters. Like, they all are pretty likable in my opinion, but they don't really kind of do much of anything. Like, they'll have like their major little story arc. It's not even major, it's minor, because you know the story mainly focuses on Hawks and Bakugo and Todoroki and his entire family and Endeavor and all right, like the dude. for the rest of this video all right so i'm gonna just talk real quick about her um whole talk her whole tangent about the whole uh female stuff and how well like i said i already said that doesn't work um for what's his face for x-men and star wars but for like my hero academia that the girls are on the side and they're just comic relief <laughs> that's bs um one okay ochako has done a lot more uh outside of her fight with bakugo and so i mean don't get me wrong that fight was awesome uh, and stuff. I mean, it wasn't like epic cinematically or anything like anything crazy like that. But what I liked about it was like how that made me kind of change the way I thought about Bakugo's character and how I kind of respected his character and Ochiko's character a lot more. But there were still things that Ochiko and many other the female students inside uh, Class 1A have done and whatnot that's contribute to the plot or whatever. Like for example, Ochiko uh, recently, and I'm not going to spoil too much, or I'm not going to spoil anything too major, but recently uh, Ochiko managed to talk down an entire crowd of people who were ready to mob Deku uh, as of recent, so that was actually pretty cool. Uh, and she gave this epic speech and stuff, it was awesome, she even um, helped motivate Deku and whatnot. She even, um, another instance uh, in one of the recent seasons of My Hero Academia, um, Ojiko managed to um, help Deku uh, maintain his quirk and whatnot whenever uh, when he started to use his new quirk, uh, the Black Whip and stuff, uh, which is really destructive and powerful at first. So yeah, Ojiko managed to help him there. Um, she was a part of that whole Chizuki, Hisakai or whatever, the Yakuza raid and stuff. She was there, her, Su, uh, Hado, uh, the Dragon Lady, all of them were a part of that, uh, as well as, you know, Deku and Karashima and them, and Mirio and Tamaki and all, yeah, they're all a part of that. So, it's not like they're just on the side. And then there's other students outside of just Ochiko, like, of course, Sue, uh, she's done stuff like help intern with Udaraka 
and stuff, and um, and Hado, and that she like they both had all like you know helped stop villains and stuff casually, as like you know part of their internship and whatnot. Uh, Sue actually managed to stop an entire drug bust. Um, well, not single handedly, but yeah, she did play a big part in stopping that drug bust and stuff. And notice when things were getting dicey and stuff. So yeah, there was that um, when they were stealing cargo and stuff when she was interning um, at first. So that was pretty awesome. And then there's other stuff too, like Koyoka's performance and stuff that she gave at that festival. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Yayu Rosa, when she teamed up with Todoroki, she actually came up with a plan and managed to uh, help Todoroki defeat uh, Mr. Aizawa. So that was also pretty cool. Uh, Mina Ashido, uh, Mina was able to uh, motivate Karashima going onwards and stuff, where back in the day, like, they used to go to the same high school and stuff. And Karashima came across this one guy that he felt like he couldn't stand up to but Mina did and that actually inspired him forward to um you know want to become much more braver and bolder and stuff so yeah and probably a lot more outgoing and stuff too so yeah that was pretty awesome so yes the female characters inside My Hero Academia really do have a lot of impact and whatnot and no it does not have to be uh girl empowered or it doesn't have to be like all female centric just to appeal to a female audience because I mean Maybe I'm not exactly the person, like, because I'm a guy myself, but my cousin, actually, my younger cousin, she's actually, like, she's a teenager and stuff, so she's, like, 15. She just turned 15 recently, and her and her friends, they're all into my academia and stuff. They like it how it is and stuff. My cousin, she has, like, several posters up in her room and, like, several different, like, plushies of, like, of, um, Bakugo and stuff, and even a pillow and stuff, and all that stuff, and, like, all these, like I said, posters of My Hero Academia and stuff, really big posters and stuff that she got from her friends, or conventions and stuff. Hell, one time my cousin actually kind of, um, braided her hair, or got, like, red and white highlights put in her side of her hair so she can kind of resemble Todoroki, which is kind of crazy, but, it, well, and it did look actually kind of cool, though, I ain't gonna lie, but, uh, yeah, she did that, uh, and she really loves My Hero Academia, so, you don't gotta change it just to appeal to some weird female audience or whatever, She's just injecting what she likes and stuff, and it's like, okay, My Hair Academia would definitely be better if it was a teenage drama. No, it wouldn't. Basically, it would be some weird teenage drama that nobody wants to watch, and basically, like, the female characters would have been written to be, like, Mary Sue's or something, I bet, if this was her writing it, but it's good the way it is. Um, she doesn't have to, like, you know, she loves the female characters and stuff, like, um, Ochiko, Sue, uh, Koyoka, Yayu Rose, and all of them, but... Mostly my cousin, she likes um, characters like Todoroki or Bakugo or Deku and stuff. She's definitely a big fan of Todoroki and, and Bakugo, if I haven't made that clear enough. But yeah, so stuff like that, I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Um, and again, it doesn't have... It, what you call it? My Hero Academia is a shonen anime. Shonen animes are meant to appeal to like 14-year-old boys. Not to say that girls can't be interested in it either, but it's meant to appeal to a like, you know, to a teenage audience, because that's mostly the audience that they have that would look forward to watching, like, shonen, such as myself. Um, I mean, I'm not 14 or anything, I'm a grown-ass man, but I'm interested in shonen stuff like One Piece and Naruto and Bleach, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Rurouni Kenshin, Yu Yu Hakusho, shows like that and stuff, where it's like a coming of age for the hero, where it's like, oh, you know, they get stronger and stuff, that kind of thing. So, and My Hero Academia is like one of those type of animes, just like Black Clover, and Seven Deadly Sins, or uh, Demon Slayer and stuff, etc. So, anyways, I feel like, um, she, yeah, again, she doesn't understand uh, My Hero Academia. She is completely disrespectful to the uh, writer, Kohei Hiko, um, Hirokoshi, and stuff, yeah, Kohei Hirokoshi, uh, and whatnot, um, who I'm pretty sure has been busting his ass, because being a manga artist is no small task. I mean, you gotta draw, you gotta... Um, you got rights, you got deadlines, you got, um, you probably don't even get that many vacations and stuff. I, so yeah, um, you understand what, what, yeah, where, where it coming from being a manga artist and stuff. But anyways, uh, that's all I gotta say on My Hero Academia. Uh, from on, this point on, it's just filler or whatnot, but yeah, for her. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this is the Keenest Fox and I am out. Peace. And until we meet again.